today is going to be a fairly short day, um, just covering a couple things that I missed last time, and then talking mostly about um, some tools that you can use to more efficiently make a website. So the first thing that I want to do, we made our really basic um, website last time, but I realized that I forgot to mention one of the most important things that you'll want to know about when making a website, and that's putting in a hyperlink or a link to another web page. So we have our website here. I was going to ask because, like, you just put the file uh, extent, like, instead of like putting an actual website. Yep. Link, yeah. Yep. So. Uh, what I want to do is go back into my index.html file and I want to make something into a link. And so let's take this, this sentence, I like dogs. Uh, let's make the word dogs into a link to a page about dogs. So I will start that by creating an A tag. Um, so A href href equals and then let's find a website about dogs all right so I'm going to copy that URL just paste it here um, close the tag href is just a hyperlink reference and then at the end of the word dogs, since I want only the word dogs to be um, linkable, I will end the a tag. So I will save that, go back into my website, and refresh. And you'll notice that dogs has now become underlined. And when I hover over it, it the icon changes. So I click on that, and it immediately takes me to the page that I just created the link for. Um, but what if I don't want it to just open in the same tab that I have open? How do I make it open in, up into a new tab uh, so that I can just save where I'm at? Uh, well, we can add an option to this A tag um, and make add a target. Uh, so target equals uh, underscore blank. I don't know why they use that nomenclature, but what this will do, I'll save this page and refresh. And so when I click it, it opens the article up into a new tab. And so there are a few other things that you can make it target. Um, target was mostly useful for pretty much late 1990s, early 2000, uh, a lot of people used frames for their websites. And I highly do not recommend ever making a website using frames, uh, mostly because uh, what, what frames would do is basically break up the site into different sections. So if I had a top frame, which had all of my links for navigation, and I had like two subframes, one for content, one for some content, another for other content, um, the browser could easily get confused as to which frame uh, that content wanted to be put in. Um, so it was just confusing for everybody and um, luckily frames have sort of gone away mostly, but you'll see a few relic websites that still use frames. Um, but that's no longer necessary, so very rarely will you use any other sort of target tag uh, other than underscore blank. Your target would just be a link to whatever frame you want things to go in, but hopefully frames are, are gone and gone for good, but you'll probably still every once in a while see a web page with frames. All right, what if I wanted to um, add this link not to the text here, but to the picture that I found? Well, um, if I want it to link to the same place, I'll just copy that and just surround my image Um, 
with the A tags. Tap this over. So this image will become hyperlinked. So I'll save that and see what happens. Refresh the page, and now I can click on the picture of the dog and it'll redirect to that web page. So that's very useful, especially if you want to link images. Uh, sometimes in websites that I've seen, people like to make fancy looking buttons and the easiest way to make the button it, a link is just to put tags around it. Um, also, you might not necessarily like uh, the hyperlink to be underlined. That's where um, some CSS comes in, so you can open up your CSS file and add properties to the A tag uh, to get rid of the, the underline. So um, I, I won't bother with that, but that's an option. You can, you can do all sorts of things to uh, links. If it's a clicked link, you can change the color that it changes to. Usually when it's an unclicked link, it's some like blue, and when it's clicked, it turns to a darker shade. Uh, but you can modify all those properties easily using CSS. So that's that covers most of the basics for creating the website. Um, but now I want to sort of move on a little bit to a content management type system. So I mentioned last time that WordPress is a very powerful and useful content management system. Um, and we didn't quite get, uh, we didn't have enough time to create everybody individual sort of accounts. So we all have accounts on Astro One, but we have to create a, a database so that WordPress can access that database. Uh, but once that database is created, you don't have to worry about it. So if you really want to have a WordPress website set up on Astro One, uh, let me know <coughs> and uh, Rick and I can figure out how to get you um, a WordPress installation on Astro One. Uh, but I have, I just installed WordPress on my own website uh, and I'll just sort of go through the process. Once you have it uh, installed, you'll you'll go to your website and it'll need some basic information uh, create a web uh, a username and password this will act as your login And then you can also set privacy. Um, usually ser big search engines like Google uh, will, will do what's called indexing your website, which makes it so that they know what content is on your website so that they can add it to their search listings. So if you had a, a website on optical emission spectroscopy or something, uh, and those were that appeared many times on your website, Google would index that and see that, okay, your website probably has something to do with this topic. So that will help them in their page rankings and you might have your website listed in search results. But for, for these purposes, I don't want to allow search engines to index the site. So I'll just install WordPress. It'll take a few seconds. By the way, I'm running my, my own website. Um, normal practices to, uh, to make a website. If you, wanted to, um, if you wanted to create your own website, there are many different routes you could take. Um, you could just use your own server space on Astro One, and that you have access to. You can put website web pages in your public HTML folder, and that will be visible to the public. Um, if you wanted to have your own, what we call domain name, so I own kevinkhu.com, you can go through a company, just for example, not saying that they're the best or anything, uh, somewhere like godaddy.com, uh, you can search for a domain name. Uh, so, so basically you're just renting out their server space, small space or whatever. 
Um, well, so there, there are two separate things you have to worry about. Um, you have to worry about your domain name. Uh, the name, I don't quite know who owns it, but if domain names are not taken, you can buy just the domain name. Once you have that domain name, you have to be able to host the content from your website. So if I wanted to buy the URL, I like astronomy.org, I would purchase that. Usually it costs so much per year, um, but it's usually uh, just a set rate for the year. So it ranges between five and $20 to purchase a dom domain for a year, and that has to be renewed every year. Uh, then you have to have somewhere to put the, the content. And so um, you can either go through GoDaddy again as your host and what they'll do is give you a certain amount of server space mm -hmm. and you can put your files on their servers or you can set up your own server. Um, what, I have, uh, what I have my personal website set up on is not this, here we go. Uh, I have my personal website set up on a little, you can basically use any computer as long as you have a static IP address. So, it means it's always on, obviously. yeah, it means that there's, there's one address location and that's the location of your computer. And so you can tell the, the company that, that you purchased your domain name from that you, you have all of your content at this specific address on the internet. And so make sure that when I go to this website that all of that content is put up there. So I have what's called a Raspberry Pi. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. Um, it's a little $35 computer uh, that I just have connected to a power supply and an, an Ethernet cable, and that is hosting my website. So, um, so like if you were to shut that off, then you, nobody would be able to find your Right, exactly. So if there's a power outage in Toledo or something, nobody would be able to access my website. Um, so probably part of the benefits of hosting your own website on your own server is that you have total control of everything. Um, but you also have to make sure it's maintained and make sure that things like power outages don't affect your, your particular system. And your and your IP address is secure. And that your IP address is secure, yes. Um, mine is sitting in my office, so it's it's basically being hosted through the university, and the university has all sorts of firewalls, so I'm not too worried about that at the moment. But if you were to host it from, say, home, you have to be a little bit more careful about the security. Um, uh, with that, you you are responsible for your own content. Like, you have to do your own backups of your data, uh, so it's not necessarily the best option for everybody. Usually when you purchase hosting from any company, like GoDaddy, they have some sort of like 99% uptime guarantee. So like, they're responsible if their servers go down, um, they make sure everything is working most of the time, almost 100% of the time for you. So you have a little bit less control of, of things uh, that route. But if you want to know more about maybe creating your own web server, I'd be more than happy to show you at some point. Just not at the moment. So uh, I've installed WordPress on my, my thing. Um, let's see if that works. And I get to this uh, this page. Um, if you want to log in to be able to edit your WordPress site, you would go to wherever you installed WordPress and then put a slash wp-admin and it would take you to the login screen. Um, another option if you didn't want to like put go through the hassle of downloading WordPress and installing it on the server, you could just go to wordpress.com and you can set up a free website. The only um, caveat is that it's like you come up with a username or whatever you want your your website to be, um, but it, it's going to be called whatever.wordpress.com. So you don't, so the identity is more through wordpress.com and it's not 
not necessarily your own. So, uh, but that is that is a, an option. Um, let's see. So once you have installed WordPress, you get to this nice, lovely dashboard with all sorts of options and settings and things that you can customize. Uh, first, you'd probably want to go through settings and do some general settings, make sure that things look how you want them to look. Uh, the site title, which will appear at the top of the website, will be, just for now, Kevin's website. Here, let's actually look at what the very basic general install website looks like. So this is what the website looks like right when I install it. It has Kevin's website, and then it has some tagline, and then it has some content, and then a bunch of things on the left. I don't really want it to look like that. So uh, I'm going to get rid of this tagline. I don't need a tagline. Um, I can change the time zone to, I think that's our time zone. Um, and then there are just a bunch of settings. One other thing that I'll mention, I mean, it's worthwhile to go through all of the settings and make sure everything's to your liking. But at the bottom here, there's this thing called permalinks. Uh, this will this will be useful to show like what do you want what do you want website like pages within your website to look like. So do you want it to be non-descriptive and just have this question mark p equals whatever page number? Do you want it to have the date and then like the title of the thing? Uh, do you want it to be more simple and just have the title of the page that you created? Or do you want something crazy um, which you can have full control of? Uh, I usually just stick with, let's just have the page title be whatever the title of the page that I created. So I'm going to save that. Alright, and then appearance. So one of the probably best things about WordPress or any content management syst uh, system is that you can add custom themes. And so um, in recent years there has been a huge push to make things work and look pretty between platforms. So there's a lot of, there are a lot more like smartphone devices, tablets, um, and laptops available and they all have different screen resolutions and you want it to look um, and you want it to look good on across all platforms uh, no matter what so uh, there is this thing called bootstrap created um, by the guys who actually created Twitter and the goal was to make things look nice across platforms but without having to change too much so uh, they created this thing called Bootstrap, and their system for making it look good across platforms is called Responsive. So I'm just going to install a responsive-like theme. Uh, you can also preview these things, and you probably should before you install them. But I'll install the theme. It'll tell me when it's done. And then you have to activate that theme. Uh, recently, WordPress has gotten a lot better about not, well, sort of allowing you to still have control of the, the code behind these themes, but making a lot easier to edit things visually. So there's a, sort of a what you see is what you get, or WYSIWYG interface. Um, and under the appearance menu, there are a lot of options to just, if you don't want to have to look at code to customize your theme, um, you can just uh, just go through all these options. So theme options, if I wanted to just see what I got, um, there are all sorts of properties. Uh, we don't necessarily have time to go through everything, um, but uh, I, I think one of the most powerful things about WordPress, if you saw, install it on your own server, is that you can edit the themes. So you can edit the code behind the themes. So they typically have a single style sheet, 
And so if you don't like how the links look, uh, you can go through uh, their CSS and edit that. Um, this one doesn't look like it has too much CSS that you can edit, but one thing that I like to get rid of in any page is this, like, the ability for people to comment on things. Uh, let's see. Let's first add a new page. So, let's publish this. And preview things. Again, there are all sorts of options for things you can do within WordPress. Um, you can also create menus. So WordPress is what started out as sort of a blogging software, so normally people wouldn't create subpages, um, but then they realized that, well, you can basically use it to create a full website with a blog embedded in it. So I want to make a new menu. So I create a menu. And then I can add the two pages that I have to the menu. Uh, I can also make a page a sub item of another one. And depending on how their menu layout is, the sub items could be, there could be like a drop down menu and you could select an item or it's just depending on how the theme is, it it's laid out differently. And so I will save this menu. And then I'll customize my theme. Sorry, it's running a little slow today. And then I want to change my uh, menu, make sure it's the menu I just created. Um, you can also create a static front page. Normally it'll, if you just log into WordPress, you can create a new like blog post. Uh, if you want there to be a static home page, you don't want just your blog post put up front, you can say I want the this to be a static page. Um, and for my front page, I'll say, here, let's make this research page that I just created as my home page. That way you don't have to have it as a blog. So that's saved. And we can see that um, that's my new website home page. But, but in any case, uh, WordPress is a very powerful content management system. If you have any questions, if you want to get that installed on your, your Astro One account, let me know. Uh, if you have any questions about just WordPress in general, um, again, let me know. There's all sorts of things you can customize within here, um, but that's about it. So I think Terrence wanted to come up here and sort of give a preview for next week's workshop on Python. So if you want to... It doesn't seem to be uh, just, a simple, just a simple Python shell or... Um, Today's or next week's. Like for next week. We're going to cover... Uh, the first lecture is about Python itself, the syntax and uh, the basics. The yeah. second uh, is about a scientific Python. So the stacks that overlays on top of it. So NumPy, SciPy, uh, Matplotlib, Pandas, and mm -hmm. maybe a touch of Sci SimPy, okay. so some mathematical stuff. And the third one is about astronomy. There's uh, there, there are two, I think, astronomy well-known astronomy packages. One is AstroPy, another is AstroML. I think, I, I'm not sure how many you will cover, but I think it's up to Joseph. But the reason I'm here today is just to let you set up Python installation at least um, before uh, next week's seminar begins because when it begins we want to, to do some live coding so it, it will have less time left for us to do the installation at that time. And also there are a few um, materials that we would like you to um, read through before 
um, it all starts because there are tons of nice resources online and it makes no sense to reinvent the wheels um, when you can just browse through them. So um, I, I'm not going to use any computer uh, for now. Okay. So, uh, if you're using Windows or uh, Mac OS, we highly recommend you to install a big distribution, Python, scientific Python distribution called Anaconda, like the snake or something. If you search Anaconda um, space Python, you'll be directed into a Google page. Right. But could you also go back? Mm -hmm. Because if you if you click on download right now, they'll ask you to sign up. So why not just when you search for it, go directly to the second link, download Anaconda, and you directly welcome to the page. And see, you, you have three choices of your platform, Windows, um, Mac OS, and Linux. For Linux users, it's your choice. It's not my concern because the package management um, app will do the job for you, but it's still up to you. This package is also applicable for uh, Linux users, and it's very well uh, maintained, and it's always up to date. I think it's somewhat better than the um, package management, software management uh, in, uh, in Linux. So let's, why not we click on uh, whatever with the platform you want to do and say, I want Python 3.4. So uh, you want Python 3.4. Yeah, we made that decision. The prevalent uh, edition is, uh, the version is 2.7, but 3.4 is already on its way for more than three years. And uh, the reason why we didn't make the move back then was because all the, uh, a lot of packages were not very very compatible, but now it's a completely different scenario now, and there are a lot of advantages for Python 3.4. So we wanted to do that, and uh, if you're using Windows, just download the uh, graphical uh, installer and uh, make that installation, and it will show up on your uh, startup list or um, somewhere, and you can find it. Um, Mac OS users, it's a little bit different, and you have to set up some environmental um, variables, but that's not a very big deal. But there's some documentation, so... Right, you can always read through it. It's, it's extremely simple, and if you install this, you have everything else you ever need to worry about, and all the other packages are very simple to install as well from that. And also, I mean, usually, on, usually on Linux, I think you can just do the sudo yeah. and get it right from that. Yes, you can that's do right. it. Yep. I'm telling you that this one is even well better packaged oh. because it's all about Python, so it cares about it. So the it's not just a basic shell or anything like that. Yeah, it does no. a lot more. Uh, if you get into it, uh, it, it will be a cut up IPython shell, which is more powerful than the Python uh, default shell. So let's make a search, another uh, another search for the materials we would like you to, to read through. Uh, J.R. Johansson, the same word. It's, it's a one word, J.R. Oh. Johansson. And uh, space Python. If you want to search J.R. Johansson, it'll get Scarlett Johansson, so oh. I won't do that. Uh, wait, yes, the first one. And it'll, it'll get you to a GitHub repository, and if you scroll down to read me all the way down, it don't have to click in the button. Oh, yes, okay. of course. Um, scroll down, you'll see uh, it even has a content page. And see, lecture zero is about some philosophy about scientific, what, what, what scientific research means. And we would like you to go through lecture one um, before Tuesday, otherwise, we, we know it's. Uh, it's biggest holiday, but uh, if you have time, go through this one. It's it covers more more of the syntax of Python. So it will be very nice if you if you don't know Python yet, and if you go through this, um, this is called a uh, Python IPython notebook. Actually, if you use IPython to to get into this, you can execute all these commands and get the output out of it. But it can also be viewed as just a plain web page. So for now, we can just use this, use it as a web page, and maybe go back. Mm -hmm. So this is before Tuesday. Go back on the page. And on Wednesday, we're going, co we're going to cover the scientific Python, which is a little bit more. Uh, if you have time, I would highly recommend you cover lecture uh, two, NumPy, and lecture three a little bit. So lecture two, NumPy, Lecture 4, Matplotlib are the two uh, packages we're going to use very 
highly. Because NumPy is basically a, the MATLAB of Python, and MATLAB is the plotting package. And as physicists or scientists in general, you're going to have to plot. Um, so these two, actually two and four. So basically one, two, and four. And if you have time, you can go to three and five, but you don't have to. And I think we'll have a good, uh, be very nicely bootstrapped when the time comes where we're really doing some live coding in this room. You still open? I know like some shells, like Python shells, you can open up in a command prompt actually. Yeah. I think that's what we're talking about, the uh, IP yeah. Python. Okay. Have you installed any Python distributions? I've had a, just a basic Python shell before, like from a website, and yeah. you can actually just open it up, or you can open it up in a command prompt and actually work in a command prompt with it. So. Yeah, IPython is a, a slightly, well, very much more advanced yeah. version of it. Yeah. All right, I think that's it. So make sure you read up on Python for next week. All right. We're, we're going to send emails uh, as well, but just in case.